Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney, Executive Director of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. Labor Vision, a production of the Institute, focuses on topics of importance to working Rhode Island families. We hope you enjoy this evening's edition. Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney. Over the last many years, in particular the last year, there's been a lot of discussion about student loan debt, something we all don't really want to deal with, but for many families, for parents and for students, it's a very real issue. Across the country, depending upon the state and the school that students go to, students can accumulate a debt upwards of $60,000 at the end of a four-year program. Um, probably not the best place in the world to start, but it's a reality. And we're looking at the opportunity of changing that for some individuals. So I'm pleased in this program to introduce Michael Perrick. Michael is the CEO for, um, it's actually a program on free college, it's Higher Ed Partners. And uh, Michael has designed a program on how individuals can enroll and get an associate's degree for free using resources that are already there. And just for full disclosure of information, the Institute for Labor Studies and Research has been working with Michael for three years now? Yes. So let's talk about higher ed partners and this whole philosophy of a free degree for families. Well, first of all, Bob, thanks very much for inviting me to join your program today. We started this program with public service unions in Ohio a couple of years ago. Uh, we had had a lot of experience in working in poorer communities, communities like Youngstown, Ohio, or Middletown, Ohio, which had high levels of Pell eligibility amongst their regular students. And it occurred to us that if you could pool together students who had either high levels of Pell eligibility or they had tuition reimbursement, or they had veterans administration, and you pulled them together in what is effectively an educational insurance program, that you would be able to make sure that everyone had equal access to a, uh, to a program with no cost out of, their, out of their pocket. We started it as a pilot with the Fraternal Order of Police and with the ASME unions in Ohio. It was very successful, not only financially, but it was very successful from an outcomes point of view. High completion rates, high graduation rates. And we were uh, delighted a year ago when ASME International asked us if we would take this around the country to their 1.6 million members and retirees. You believe, I mean, I remember when the announcement was made within a matter of days of that announcement, you had significant numbers of people, both members and their families, calling in looking for more information. Was it 16,000 in a very short time? Well, it's now up to 20,000, but it, it, was, it happened very, very quickly. And I think it speaks to how sensitive working men and women are in this country to the cost of education. Uh, we all lived through in 2008 the issues around the housing market. But quite frankly, the student debt market in many ways dwarfs that in terms of the exposure to the, to the economy. It is simply unsustainable. That's why people like Senator Saunders were raising the question, and Senator, uh, Secretary Clinton had the uh, proposal of uh, free college. Now, I'm not sure in the current environment that's going to happen at a national level, but we think that at a grassroots level, with the assistance of the, of the labor movement, we'll be able to make that happen. Now, you and, I, you and I have been working together for three years in yes. terms of really trying to make an attempt to make this a piece of a member's benefit for unions. And I think that you know your plan, your strategy in saying the individuals have Pell money, there might be veterans affairs money, there are unions so that over the years have committed money to education and training and degree programs. By putting that money together, um, it provides the opportunity for individuals who are members of unions, but also their families to get this free associate's degree in a number of areas. Now, I believe the university or the college that we're working with, the one that, that is out front with you is Eastern Gateway Community College. It's a state accredited institution in Ohio. Tell me more about that, that institution. 
Well, they've been obviously the main catalyst for this. A lot of this goes back to programs that they had with groups like the IBEW. So they've had a, a history that goes back uh, maybe a decade or longer of working with, with unions. The one thing that they know when you have a student who's a member of a union, they tend to be very focused, uh, very professional. They have a, they're very goal oriented. They want to get their degree done in the quickest and most efficient and hopefully the most financially responsible way. So we were able to convince them to do this on a much larger scale because we knew that they understood the needs of men and women of the labor movement and were able to um, uh, treat them the way they needed to be treated, which it often involves uh, uh, flexibility. It involves understanding they have busy schedules, sometimes they have family commitments. So all of the instructors who work on these programs understand they're not just dealing with somebody who's six months out of high school, they're dealing with people who have um, busy, varied lives and responsibilities, and we try to work with them to meet their educational and career goals at the same time. I know our experience has been, particularly when we take a look at United Association of Plumbers and Pipefitters, where you get a cohort of people, they will attend a class, depending upon how far down the pike they are, they may come together once a week or twice a week, but they basically get that work together, they get the work completed, um, for the online program, they come together as a cohort, a facilitator will help them make sure that the work is completed, that they're up to schedule. But what we find is that the success rate is significantly higher than other post-secondary institutions because they work together as a cohort, they don't want to miss class, they have the support of a facilitator, but they also have the support of the people at Eastern Gateway and, and all of that support from higher ed partners. Yes, yeah, so that, that's right. Just because something's online doesn't mean there isn't a human component to it. Uh, delivering content online is designed to make people's lives convenient. The, uh, in that way, it's no different than your ability to do online banking or to uh, other, you know, shop online or things like that. But eff effectively, a uh, human com component, whether it's with your instructor, whether it's with your peers, is very, very important. In Ohio, for example, at Ohio State Penitentiary, there's a group of correctional officers who are working towards getting their criminal justice degree. And they created uh, their own in-house in study group. And they have been in, uh, enormously effective. In fact, the State Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections recently adopted it as a model that they're going to use in other facilities to help encourage their members to pursue an education. So you're absolutely right, and, and you helped form a lot of my thinking on this through your experiences here in Rhode Island in that area. I, I, think, I think that support is so critical, but I think from the education end, you've come up with an idea of taking resources that are there and allocating them, because I think it's important for people to realize there's Pell funding available but depending upon your situation, your income, it may not be eligible for everybody. But by taking that pool of resources together and putting it together, you can, much like you say, an insurance policy, allocate it across the board so that it may very well be it, whether it's a veterans, a veteran allocating veteran affair benefits to one of the spouses, or using union scholarship funds to allocate toward the program, or training funds that a state may have, but there's a pool of resources that available are available that can be transferred over to a program that gives that one-on-one -on -one support, even though it's online. And, and I think what's really important is the support that your organization provides, most recently opening a call center to be able to answer the questions of those people who are interested. And I think it's probably starting with your Ask Me initiative, where people have the opportunity to call in and talk to somebody who's a counselor and help walk them through the process. Well, we're, we're very pleased that a large part of the calling that will go on for Ask Me International is actually going to be happening here in, in Rhode Island. Uh, you are able to set us up in a very nice uh, space and we get some very talented people who are going to be available when workers need them. 
not when it's convenient for us, but when it's convenient for them. So we have folks who will be answering the phone late at night. Uh, we have folks who will be working over the Christmas holidays because uh, I know a lot of public school employees, for example, who we service, uh, the Christmas holidays is their downtime. It's when they get a chance to think about how they want to improve their uh, careers. That's a, so we're, thanks to a lot of the help you're giving us, we're making sure that we're very responsive to people and we're there when they need us. I think your selection of courses too, your selection of programs are important. Uh, we just finished working with a group of home daycare providers in the state, and I think you have a certificate in early childhood education that leads to a degree in early childhood education, and which is really wonderful for them. Or when we, when we get the opportun opportunity to meet with correctional officers who may want to use it for themselves or have the opportunity for their sons or daughters to be able to get that degree. And I think that it's important that people understand that if they want more information, they can simply call, I believe, I have a number here, it's 888-590-9009. That's 1-888-590-9009. Um, I don't usually call out numbers like that, but I think it's important right. for people no, to that, know. No, that's very important because we want to get this information out to people. You mentioned uh, child care workers. Uh, we do have an early childhood education program. As you know, under uh, federal mandate, I believe it is, anybody who's going to be working in that area long term is going to need either a certificate or an associate's degree in that area of specialty and we want to help workers accomplish that in an efficient way. Uh, you mentioned correctional services officers in parts of this country in order to move off a correctional services facility and say go into the probation or the parole service you need a, a criminal justice degree we want to help you we want to help you get that. But we're also interested in getting into a number of new areas. Uh, we're hoping early in next year to have an IT degree, medical assisting, paralegal, uh, things that either members or their family would say, but that's something I'd like to pursue because that might be a good next career for me. There's a video that you have um, that we've had access to that um, there's a member of Ask Me and, a, and, and actually a correctional officer who in Ohio is a member of Ask Me who carries on a conversation about the importance of acquiring an education and the importance of having the opportunity of moving up that, that line, that link to a new job. And I think that this is clearly my, my, the, one of the most important things I believe is the role that it plays in economic development in improving the state and in improving the lives of the people who you work with. And I, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time and putting together a cadre of people who have the background in academics and finances and, and, and overall administration and support for people calling in to the call center. And I think that you know by the time that this, that this airs, um, I would encourage people to call into the call center, get as much information as you can. You have a wide variety of degrees that are available now. We have a general studies associates degree program, criminal justice, business administration, which are you know, very po uh, all of which are the, probably three most popular programs that are out there in online education. Uh, as I said, we'll be expanding into IT and various healthcare disciplines. Uh, hopefully uh, by, the, by this time, uh, you know, March of, of 2017. Uh, we've learned a lot from the work that we've done with you uh, and George Nee over the years, and so we're grateful for a lot of the insights you provided. Uh, I come from Rhode Island, uh, li live in, on, in Jamestown, Rhode Island, so while we work nationally, this is my home, and I really would like to make a big impact here on behalf of this program. Hey, thanks, Michael. I appreciate the effort that you put into it, the fact that um, you're making this a Rhode Island base as much as possible, and that this truly is, from, from organized labor's perspective, a member's benefit for the members and their families. Thank you very much for joining us, and, uh, and continue with the good work, and I look forward to many more years working together. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Our guest this evening has been Michael Perrick. He is the CEO of Higher Ed Partners. Um, it's important to realize that the community college that um, is providing the programs right now is a accredited state school from Ohio um, that our hope is that we continue to grow from that community college to others around the United States, including the community college of Rhode Island, hopefully in the future. Um, I look forward to 
you calling that number, getting more information, and hopefully a little time from now, many more of you will have had the opportunity to start your college degree. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to welcome everybody this morning to the 27th annual Gingerbread Express. As is custom here at our school, we always start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would now like to call for a moment of silence. This year's moment of silence uh, will be dedicated to the memory of Mr. Nick Gomez Hall. Nick was a former director of our after-school programs. Uh, he came to us through the Brown University Swear Center for Public Engagement. And when the fire happened in Oakland, California a couple weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, I didn't think I had anything to think about, anything to consider. Uh, I, I felt for it, but then I realized I started getting some information that our own Mr. Nick uh, was involved in that tragedy. Uh, and it really hit home. And again, as always, just another reason to consider myself fortunate. So if we could just take a sincere moment of silence on behalf of Mr. Nick Gomez Hall. Thank you. Boys and girls, I'd like you to lead us in the William Debate Pledge. I... Thank you. You may be seated, boys and girls. Uh, so, welcome everyone. And again, as I said, this is the 27th Annual Gingerbread Express. Um, I'm, I'm so blessed that this is my ninth uh, Gingerbread Express. This is my ninth year in the building. And believe me, I thank my lucky stars all the time that I'm still part of this school. So please bear with me while I take a couple of moments to brag about our boys and girls and our faculty and staff. As many of you know, the Rhode Island Department of Ed has a new classification system, slightly new classification system for schools. Schools classification used to be based almost entirely upon your kneecap results, how many students were proficient, and that was it. And that kind of a metric, that kind of a measurement, didn't really reflect the great work that was doing, going on here at our school. So fortunately, a couple years ago, the Department of Ed changed their classification system. They now use multiple measures to come up with what's called a composite index score. So they take three measures. And so the first measure they, they look at is the percentage of students who met expectations. Then they look at the percentage of students closing gaps. And then they look at the percentage of students that are making growth for a total, potential total of 100 points. Well, our school received 64 out of 100 points last year for a total composite index score of 64. In the city of Providence, in the city of Providence, that was the single highest composite index score out of the 20 elementary schools. That is amazing. That is outstanding that our boys and girls had the highest composite index score out of the 20 elementary schools. It's not overly surprising, but it's just an amazing accomplishment. And I just, I want to let our boys and girls know, I want to let our faculty and staff know, I want to let all of our support professionals know, I want to let our kitchen staff know, our custodians know, all of our community partners, you're part of that. Every single one of you should take some, some credit, should take you know, a really solid feeling inside your heart, because you all contribute to that. Uh, we get together on a day such as gingerbread, and I, I know a lot of these faces now, because I've been fortunate to have been here for nine years, but by the same token, a lot of faces I look around I don't recognize. But still, you contribute to our school's success. Every single one of you. From the police department to the public, the, the public employees to the public uh, uh, political representatives, you all take part in this. Because guess what? Everybody knows gingerbread. Everybody knows about the Gingerbread Express. 
And so when you have that behind your school, you, you better believe it impacts our school in a positive way. So I thank every single one of our community partners, in addition to our faculty and staff, in addition to our boys and girls, and our outstanding parents. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So now I'll focus almost solely on our boys and girls. We also had the highest attendance in the city of Providence last year. We had over a 95% daily attendance rate here last year. <laughs> Those of you who have been listening to me for the last several years, you know I talk about this every year. I talk about attendance because I honestly believe it's a critical factor in student success. Again, I'm certainly not the smartest person in the room, but if you just kind of keep things simple, it kind of comes together. So if you're here every day, if you have great teachers, if you're being supported around the building, well then all of a sudden, yeah, you probably will have the highest composite index score. And that's what we have. So it all comes together. And I'd also like to thank our families. We have some amazing families. And a lot of our families face challenges that a lot of other people, you, you might not understand, you might not be able to comprehend. Sometimes we read about it in the paper or you see it on the news. But when you're here every day, and you see it every day, and you hear it every day, and you live it every day, and then the kids still come in, they still have their homework, they're still participating in class, and they're still trying their best, it's very heartwarming and inspiring. So I'd like to thank all of our families as well, all of our parents. <laughs> for those of you who have been coming here for a number of years, uh, unfortunately, early on in, in my tenure here at the school, I used to get, oh my God, you know, Mr. Kerman, do you need help getting the gym cleaned up? Do you need help, you know, getting the, the walls painted? So if you've been coming in the last couple of years, the gym has never looked so good. I played here as a kid, and the gym never looked so good. So I'd like to just take a brief moment to thank Councilman Correa uh, for getting this gym to, to look the way it does. The decorations uh, that are here today, they didn't just pop up this morning, obviously. Uh, that's, that's a long, intensive process. We had quite a bit of manpower, woman power, uh, that went into that. So I'd like to also then just take a moment to thank Ms. Morgan, Ms. Andrea, Mr. A, Ms. Racinos, our group PTO president, Ms. Reyes. And, and I know I missed many people, I apologize. I just, everyone who helped put our gym together to receive our guests into our house, I'd like to thank every single one of you. Because, just so you know, I get to, oh, Mr. Kerman, thank you so much. Oh, Mr. Kerman, the school looks so great. It wasn't me. It was not me. Uh, it's all of these other folks, and I, I think we, we know that. We have a new nurse here in our building this year, Nurse Jackie. Where's Nurse Jackie? Hi, Nurse Jackie. So in our building, our nurse, sort of historically, I suppose, has been the point person for, uh, with Ms. Valerie Staples. That's sort of the conduit to make sure that everything kind of flows. Well, poor Nurse Jackie, she's, she's trying to be the school nurse. Well, it's a lot more than just being the school nurse here. Uh, so fortunately, Nurse Mary, who retired last year, hi, Nurse Mary. Nurse Mary, who retired last year, has spent many days here in the building sort of trying to help make sure we don't skip a beat. And I hope by the end of today, you'll say, boy, they didn't skip a beat. And uh, so I'd like to thank those ladies for that. Not a, not a, small, not a small task. One of the greatest strengths of our school, next to our faculty and staff, are our community partnerships. Um, new families come to our school from time to time, and I get the opportunity to show them around. And one of my favorite parts is at the end when I go to tell them, listen, oh, we also have after school programs every day till 5.30. Every day? Every day. Eight months out of the school year. Oh, and by the way, we also have a five week summer program. Five-week summer program? Yep, right here at the school. I've never heard of such a thing. That's right, but we have it. We have it here at our school. And I'd like to thank Ms. Delaney Noah for all of her hard work and all of her staff for making that a possibility every year. And again, clubs ended Friday, but her and her staff have been here every day since. 
so now there's a, there's a new job here at the school, and it's getting ready for gingerbread. They're here every day, Mr. Lanya and her staff. So just amazing. Thank you for your continued support. Another tremendous partner that we have uh, here at the school, and really in the Onlyville community, is One Neighborhood Builders, formerly Onlyville Housing uh, Collaborative Corporation. I don't know if Miss Tina is here. Is Tina Shepard here? I haven't seen her this morning. Carolyn? Uh, Miss Carolyn is here on behalf of One Neighborhood Builders. If you haven't heard of One Neighborhood Builders, formerly Onlyville Housing Collaborative, if you see these houses in the neighborhood that have been revitalized, you can thank them. Um, if you see the streets being cleaned up, if you see the dog, uh, the dog waste things that are up and about, if you see people going around providing landscaping all throughout the Oneyville community, you can thank Oneyville Housing on One Neighborhood Builders. <laughs> oh, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. Our school, maybe a year or two ago, was able to finally get a walking school bus off the ground. So a walking school bus is adults who take the initiative to walk certain routes to and from school to help escort students who would otherwise have to walk in alone uh, within a mile. So we have a route that runs from the Manton housing. We have another route that handles kids who have to cross Atwell's Avenue. I wouldn't want to cross Atwell's Avenue. And these ladies do this on a daily basis. You know how nice it was out this morning? They were out there. And when it's 95 degrees, they're out there, and they're one, one's pushing their a stroller with their infant in it. Um, and if it's raining, they're out there. These ladies are out there every single day making sure that 30 to 40 of our students make it to and from school safely. So our members of the walking school bus. <laughs> and I know I'm missing a hundred other things, but I'm starting to get the signal in the back to stop talking. <laughs> Valerie? Who's Valerie? Yeah, of course, she's in the back working. Um, so since I've been here, the first name that I heard associated with Gingerbread Express was Valerie, Valerie Staples. Um, and wow, Valerie's just incredible. And I know she does not do it alone because I recognize several other faces uh, in and around. Uh, but Valerie's the point person that I deal with um, in, in my nurses. And um, Valerie, you're amazing. You're amazing to pull this off year after year and such a magnitude. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Labor Vision. We appreciate your input and encourage your comments. Labor Vision can be seen on this channel three times each week, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m.